The G20 Group of Nations Summit just concluded in New Delhi, India, and the African Union became the second regional grouping to be admitted to the Group of 20 leading industrialized and developing nations as a full permanent member. The Indian Prime Minister announced that on Saturday. It has been a widely anticipated move, though, and that shows India's desire to elevate the forum's focus on the global south under its presidency. The 55-member bloc of African nations now joins the European Union as the only um, regional organization to become a permanent member of the G20. With an embrace after the announcement, Modi welcomed AU chairperson Azali Asaumani, who is the president of Comoros, and offered him a place at the conference table for permanent members of the G20. You know, the AU is rotated annually among the continent's five regions. Now, immediately after the admission, messages of support started flowing and people started, you know, they said that success has many fathers. First was Charles Michel, president of the European Union, who went on to say on X, you know, the format Twitter, uh, the social media platform, that um, he is delighted the African Union was granted full membership in the G20. Said the EU has been a steadfast supporter of this initiative and I'm pleased to have championed it from the very beginning. Again, many other people spoke, including the US president, who echoed literally the same thing, saying that the admission of uh, the AU is very, very important. Before we come to the messages of the African leaders, let us pause for a moment and ask. What exactly is the G20 group of nations? And what are the benefits for Africa if they join this organization? We will come very soon to that, but uh, make sure to watch till the end so that you will get the full gist of what is going on here. Uh, For the Africans, Max Salov, president of Senegal, said inclusion of the African Union in the G20 would benefit the entire world. Kenya welcomed the admission, according to their president, William Ruto, who wrote also on X. He said this will increase the voice of Africa, visibility and influence on the global stage. Nigeria's Bola Atinubu, who was also at the moment, commended the move. The AU's commission head, Musa Faki Mamat, also was happy, including South Africa's President Sri Ramaphosa, who said he was delighted by the move. Remember that South Africa has been like a lonely child because he has been the only African country that is a permanent member of the G20. Now, He has about 55 behind him, though they will speak with two voices because the AU will come as a group. Now, the AU itself has a strength of 55 members, but six military-ruled nations are suspended at the moment. You know, the Mali, Guinea, um, Burkina Faso, Niger, Gabon, and the rest of them. So the AU itself has a collective GDP of $3 trillion and a population of 1.4 billion people. A trickle when compared with the G20 group of nations. Let's look at what the G20 is worth in statistics. It's composed of 19 countries plus the European Union, The G20 members represent about 80% of global GDP, 75% of international trade, and more than 60% of the world's population. Since the EU has 27 member states, France, Germany, and Italy also being individual members of the G20. The G20 effectively then represents 45, 43 countries, more than one-fifth of the United Nations members. Of all these countries, only one, South Africa, is African. 
the African Union is occasionally invited, but they are just as observers. Right, that's um, so far about the background of this. So how does Africa stand to benefit from this organization? Now, to set this scenario, first of all, it's like countries gather together and they make rules of a game that you will participate, but you are not present at the table where those rules are made. Because this is all about global trade, global economy, growth, investment, and all what you have you, um, the environmental issues and the rest of it. So these decisions are made. And they expect African countries to implement these things or to be affected, but they never sit at the table when these discussions are going on, except for South Africa. But now things are bound to change, at least to a certain level. We, I tried to summarize some of the benefits that the AU will get by joining the G20 group of nations or what it entails for Africa. First is economic empowerment. We grant access to resources. So the AU will have a direct role in shaping global economic policies. It will include participating in discussions on trade, finance, and investment, which could lead to better access to resources and markets for African countries. It could also lead to increased investment because they need to really attract foreign investment. So when you are at the table, you can discuss with them as a core partner, so to say. There will also be policy influence. I mean, in global economic governance, being part of the G20 would enable the AU to contribute to global economic governance by advocating for policies that align with African interests instead of being on the sideline and having people discuss about your faith. The climate change and sustainability is also a pressing global issue, and the AU participation in the G20 would at least allow it more to have a more prominent voice in climate negotiations and seek support for sustainable development initiatives in Africa. In terms of conflict resolution and peacekeeping, membership is also good for AU because global peace initiatives are also discussed at the G20. Russia and Ukraine was a prominent issue in this case. And Russia did everything possible to see that the G20 didn't completely condemn her invasion of Ukraine. And they went home happy that they achieved something. So this is a stage where Africa could leverage on this global assembly and make, uh, I mean, important peace initiatives. It will also bring development and infrastructure in case of funding and partnerships with other G20 members and the rest of it. Once you are at the conference table and during the lobbying interaction after meetings, you could achieve much. Human capital development, education and healthcare, the AU can also use its position to advocate for international support for education and healthcare programs in Africa. The question of trade and market access is also important. A lot of trade agreements are done there, so the AU could use that opportunity to negotiate trade agreements more effectively as a member than an observer and participant. And they can also be leveraging the AFC, FTA, the African Continental Free Trade Area aims to create the world's largest single market. G20 membership can create opportunities for African business. There's diplomatic influence, the soft power of the G20 membership will enhance AU's diplomatic uh, standing, regional stability, conflict prevention, health and pandemic preparedness, Africa, just such a lot of things could be achieved when the AU is a full member of the G20. So that is why many African leaders have been talking about it for years, pushing for it, and they have been paying lip service to it, but suddenly, the world has awakened 
and they have seen Africa that have very huge economic opportunity for growth for the future. They used to say that the future belongs to Africa. We will end it here, having told you what it's all about and what happened. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it, and you will be kept abreast of events in Africa and about Africa. We'll see you in our next updates.